This session will cover conditional formatting. Conditional formatting in Pyramid can be performed on grids, charts, or as standalone gauge elements. Pyramid allows users to set conditional formatting by using context menus, drop zones, conditional formatting dialog, or by using KPIs. All methods run off the same framework, so users can mix and match techniques. To demonstrate, we'll start with a simple grid. First, picking the items I want to format and right-clicking to show the context menu, I will add colored shapes to rank the sales value for both males and females. Next, for the management member, I want to highlight expenses values from high to low using a background color and quartiles. For all occupations with a commute distance of 2 to 5 miles, I want to use data bars to highlight the values in the cost column, highlighting each value as a percentage of the maximum cost value in the set. Next, I will rank the margin percentage values for females only using tri-band color arrows. And last, I will use the percentage of total text indicator for all net profit items to show the percentage of total next to each actual value in the grid cells. Importantly, if we change the placement of the items in the drop zones around or add things, our conditional formatting dynamically adjusts. The drop zone approach involves dragging and dropping measure chips to the color and or indicator drop zones. Color drop zone provides a conduit to conditionally changing the color of data points, while the indicator drop zone allows users to conditionally append and adjust graphical icons. Indicators are used in grid and gauge visualizations only. The drop zones offer more control over the mathematical logic and formatting effects, but they are limited to entire measures only. This effectively allows us to apply formatting on one measure based on the value of the same measure or an alternate measure. For example, I can use the sales metric to color the background of the sales metric using any of these mathematical methods. I will drop it on the linear option. This shows sales values for each of the manufacturers with the colors giving me a sense of high to low graphically. If instead I remove the sales from color and use margin instead, I will visibly see the sales value for the manufacturers but the colors will highlight the margin values for each of the manufacturers. Next, I can use price as an indicator for net profit by dragging the price chip as an arc icon and dropping it on net profit. In this next example, using a column chart, I can drag the sales chip to the color drop zone, drop it on the margin values which are driving the chart itself, to independently highlight sales amounts for the different occupations. Although not often used in the context of conditional formatting, the size drop zone can also be used in most visualizations to conditionally format the data points using size. So here, I could drop the sales measure chip on the size drop zone. Of course, I can mix and match and use multiple effects in the same visual. The conditional formatting dialog is the most detailed and most advanced interface for configuring the formatting and gives us granular control over both colors and indicators. It is best used to edit formats added through the other techniques. For example, let me add some basic conditional formatting to this grid through the context menu. Now I want to change the conditional formatting for the expenses column as the differences between the numbers don't stand out enough. I can open the dialog via the design tab ribbon or by right clicking on a value chip found in the color or indicator drop zones then selecting edit color logic or edit indicator logic. Here we see all the settings for the format rule we just added. There are three main zones in the dialog. The measures panel shows which conditional formatting rules or measures are active and allows us to select a rule for editing. Clicking the X will delete the rule. The next panel is type. 
This shows which format effects are active for the selected measure or rule. Each rule will independently have a color or indicator effect, or both. Since many formatting rules contain both items, the color and indicator may be combined for a given measure or rule. The values setting instructs the engine to apply the rule against the target selected. Choosing all will apply the logic to all measures in the query. The settings panel lets us configure the conditional logic rules for color and indicator. Although they are mostly the same, there are some differences between color and indicator. Let's focus on color first. There are color settings that allow us to drive a specific static color or use colors generated by formula known as value-driven colors. Alternatively, color bands can be used with fixed or discrete band trim points that can be hard-coded value or driven by other measures using drag and drop. Discrete bands can also be configured using logical trim points like average, positive, negative. Or rank-based trim points can be used instead. Instead of discrete bands, you could instead use continuous values or color gradients with various scales. For example, a three color linear scale using the 25% percentile as the midpoint. The indicators have settings in common with color, but there are a few exceptions. First, indicators can only be shown with discrete or continuous bands. Like colors, indicators can use bands with fixed trim points using either measure chips or static values. Discrete bands can also be configured using logical trim points like color, for example, above or below average. Indicators can also use continuous bands, where the graphic adjustments are done in a gradient of steps rather than discrete adjustments. For the last segment in this video, we will do a quick explanation of KPIs in the context of conditional formatting. KPIs are an advanced form of conditional formatting, usually including an indicator icon and color, shown either in a grid or gauge visual. Here we have a KPI that was built using the Formulate module. The dynamic banding logic generates individual formulas per band. When I add it to this grid, the settings take effect. Switching it to a gauge, we can see the alternative visualization. Notice that the actual target and status values are deployed in the appropriate drop zones. Then, opening up the conditional formatting dialog, you can see how the KPI band logic is deployed on the fixed bands for both color and indicator. For a more in-depth explanation, see the separate video overviews for KPIs and gauges.